Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, thank you to everyone for just showing up right now. We're going to be going over social media advertising. So this is going to be really important. If you guys can help me out, um, let me know in the chat bar. Are you guys advertising right now? This is really going to help me out. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and please let me know if you can see that. Can you go ahead and can you see my screen now? Is that good? Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so really quick, I am a digital marketing coach. I've been helping out small businesses, uh, national businesses, and also celebrities with online marketing, primarily social media. So um, this is going to be a great introduction into advertising on social media. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, I want to make sure that I answer everyone's questions. You guys are here spending time um, and you're here for a certain reason. So I want to make sure I address all of your questions. And thank you for the feedback. Our company is working on advertising and branding our name to San Antonio community. Vanessa, thanks. Appreciate that. So let's first start off with like, hey, what is the whole climate like right now when it comes to advertising on social media? So keep in mind, when I'm talking about social media advertising, I'm going to be talking primarily about Facebook because when you advertise on Facebook, you are also advertising on Instagram, the audience network, Oculus, mobile apps. Um, there's a lot of different platforms that Facebook actually owns, especially what's uh, WhatsApp. And when we advertise through Facebook, we are actually getting on close to 16 different platforms. So keep that in mind when I mention Facebook advertising. Um, this is completely different from Google advertising, but some of the practices, um, best practices that we're going to go over towards the end are going to be applicable for both Google advertising and social media advertising. So keep that in mind, please. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, let me know. So really quick, Facebook advertising has decreased, which is great for us. It's great for business owners because when we want to advertise, we want to make sure that we're getting the most for our dollar. We want to make sure that the ROI, the return on investment is good for our business. So keep that in mind. Right now is a great time to advertise. Um, a lot of big advertisers actually dropped out of Facebook recently uh, just because they're like protesting, but that means it's good for business owners like you and me because now we're competing with less people. Um, I'll come with less people. Instagram's ad reach is also up. So keep this in mind. Instagram is a great platform. If you have joined one of my workshops before, when we talk about social media marketing in general, I am always all in on Instagram. It's the best platform for you right now. Facebook is too saturated. Uh, but I mentioned this because remember when we advertise on Facebook, we also can advertise on Instagram as well. And I just want you guys to realize that, Hey, Instagram on the organic side where you don't pay for anything, where you just post something, you get likes and comments, uh, that's doing really well. But also on the paid side, Instagram is doing really well. Um, the ad reach, the amount of individuals that we are uh, showing our message, our products, our services is up 5.7%. Uh, now also here on the right hand side, this is really important individuals, business owners, they are spending money on advertising. I spend money on advertising. My clients spend money on advertising. People that don't even have a business, they spend money on advertising. Why? Because exposure is everything. It's not the best company. It's not the best product. It's not the best service that wins. It's always the company with or the business with the most exposure that wins because if they don't know about you, your customers will never do business with you right? It's simple as that. And uh, what I want to show you guys here is that uh, people are spending money on ads and they're going to continue to spend money on ads. So any questions right now when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, and kind of like what's going on right now with the whole pulse of the entire um, environment? Great. All right, so I just want to show you guys a few examples before we really get into things. These are a few examples of advertisements. Over here on the left-hand side, this is for Instagram stories. If you don't know what Instagram stories is, let me know in the chat. The next one is going to be a generic post. This is a post that will be shown on Instagram, on Facebook, 
And on the right hand side, these are advertisements that are shown on the audience network. So remember, if you don't know what the audience network is, the audience network is pretty much the exact same thing as Google. You can advertise on individuals websites. So if I have a website, if I have a blog and I want to sell a piece of my real estate, a piece of my website to dedicate it to Facebook advertising and you decided, Hey, I want to advertise your advertisement might pop up on my blog. So that's how it works. And it's the same way with Google. So Facebook is pretty much a direct competitor when it comes to advertising. They are a little bit different. There's different motives behind each one of them, but they are a direct competitor to Google. Okay, here we go. So over 50% of individuals have bought a product or service after seeing it on Instagram. Again, I know this is heavily focused on Instagram, but keep in mind, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So this is all really important and very relevant. So if you have advertised, um, let me know where have you guys advertised? Has it just been on Facebook? Has it just been on Instagram, YouTube, Google? I'm, I'm actually really curious about that because um, that's going to help me tailor the next portion of our training here. So we have uh, people, Robert, Facebook, Instagram, Vanessa, Facebook, Google, Instagram. Uh, okay, yeah, Facebook, Instagram look like it's pretty much the winner. So this is great. This is great news. And I'm glad. And if you guys haven't advertised before, keep in mind, you can advertise for as little as $1 per day. $1 per day, right? Um, so if you want to test something, you can spend $5 for the entire work week, put your stuff out there and see what the feedback is like. So let's get started with basically choosing our objective. So this is extremely important because when we look at objectives, we want to make sure that we're being very intentional with what object objective we choose. When we choose an objective, Facebook, the entire company, they are pretty much going to say, hey, if I want more traffic to my website, Facebook will show your ad to individuals that are most likely to click on an ad and go to a website. So you can look at an ad, but if you have a track record of never clicking on an ad and going to a website, then Facebook will say, hey, we might not show an ad to this individual because normally they never go to a website. Even if you fit that demographic because you don't have that um, reputation of having that behavior of clicking on an ad and going to a website, Facebook will not show it to you. Uh, so that is why it's so important. If you have a reputation of watching a lot of uh, videos on Facebook, Instagram, then hey, Facebook, Instagram, they are going to show you uh, video ads. And that's why an objective like video views is so important. So let's, let's go through some of the campaign goals. So these right here are essentially all of these. I'm just going to be walking through these for you really quick. Well, actually, we'll stay here. So brand awareness, this is going to be, hey, I just want to um, put myself in front of individuals. I'm not looking for any clicks. I'm not looking for any likes. I'm not looking for any comments. I just want people to at least have seen who I am. Reach is going to be, individuals so there's a big difference between impressions and reach impression impressions could be one person looking at your content 10 times so because of that it's counted as 10 views it could be two people looking at your content 10 times each and that's 20 views now reach is unique individual views so if I look at your content 10 times Facebook will only count it as one so reach is actually counting individuals and not how many views. So if you want to reach a large amount of people, reach would be a great objective for you. And if you have any questions about some of these that we're going through before we get into like, hey, actually creating the ad, uh, let me know. Now traffic is going to be, hey, I want people to go from my ad to my actual website. So that's simple enough. Engagement is going to be likes, comments, shares, saves. Saves are so important right now. 
um, on Instagram, that is a huge factor on whether or not you're going to get your content pushed out to more individuals and gain more exposure. So remember that saves are so important on Instagram right now. Um, app installs, if you have an app, people just downloading the app. Video views, if you have a video, this is going to be a perfect way to get more people to look at your video. Lead generation, so Facebook actually has a lead generation form on their page and what you can do is basically create this form and every time someone clicks on your ad, they have the opportunity to um, fill out that form, submit it to you, and it's up to you as a sales individual or whoever your salesperson is to go in, follow up with those individuals. Um, so that's a great way to develop leads, although I'm not too crazy about that for developing leads just because when um, we might get a lot of bad leads. So it could actually be a time waster for us. Messages. If we want individuals to actually send, a, send us a DM, a direct message, this is going to be a great conversion, um, a great objective for us. This is a great one. And to me, traffic, reach, and messages are my top uh, objectives only because it's easier to sell your product or service when you're able to get into a conversation with someone. So messages allow you to get right into that conversation. Store traffic, that's going to be in-person traffic. Catalog sales, this is going to be uh, straight from your Facebook page. And conversions is going to be using something like the Facebook Pixel, which we'll talk about a little bit little uh, later on. And um, basically, if someone goes from your ad to your website, they purchase something, there is a way to track that and Facebook gives you the tools and the resources in order to do that. Does this make sense for everyone? If, if it does make sense, please let me know. Just put a yes, a no in the chat. That's definitely gonna help me out. I appreciate that. Thank you, Leslie, Sarah, appreciate that. So let's talk about targeting your audience. So there's many ways to target your audience and I'm gonna go over a few of them. Um, and there is a certain way that a lot of successful businesses are targeting individuals. So when you actually do advertise, I do not want you to hit that boost button. You can hit that boost button later on in the future, but I want you to look at that boost button and I'm sure everyone has seen that boost button. I want everyone to think of the boost button as uh, a reward for doing the homework. So the homework is creating a custom audience. It's spending some time, it's spending 20, 30 minutes crafting your audience to fit your target demographic. And we do that by going to business.facebook.com. So it's a little bit different. That's the back end side for ads. So when we're on the back end side of the ads manager, this is what we'll see when we're creating an audience on the left hand side, the, le the left hand screen. So this is going to be where we can type in our zip code. We could put, hey, I want to target business owners. I want to target individuals that make X amount of money each year. I want to target individuals that eat this certain food, that do this type of workout. You can target pretty much anything when it comes to Facebook advertising. Now, remember, advertising on Facebook is also advertising on a lot of other platforms. I want you to remember that. Now on the right hand side, this is going to be a little bit more in depth of creating a custom audience. This is going to be really important. We can pull our audience based off of web traffic. So if someone went to my website and looked at um, some red shoes, I could then show that specific individual another ad for red shoes. If someone goes to a different page on my website, and goes over to a, hey, where are you located page, I could show that one specific person where exactly we're located in a specific ad for them. So you can get very specific. So think about that. Customer list, list this is going to be, hey, did someone abandon their cart that they already purchased from you last year, but you want to re-engage them? You can upload um, your email list on there and go ahead and retarget those individuals. And there's a whole bunch of other resources, videos, 
uh, lead forms, events. So if someone said, hey, I wanted to go to this event on Facebook, you could show those individuals that were interested in that event a specific ad. So what I'm trying to get at is we don't need to be running a whole bunch of generic general ads where we show our product or service and just show it to everyone. We're going to get more conversions. We're going to get a better price on advertising when we're able to retarget individuals and follow up with individuals automatically. Uh, question, will you upload this presentation? Yeah, it's being recorded actually. So um, I think this should be emailed out afterwards. Great question though. All right, so let's let's move on. Oh, there we go. Uh, places to start. So when we're creating our first audience, there are a few um, ways we can start off with. So if you haven't advertised before, you might be saying, okay, well, I don't even know what my demographic is. Now keep in mind, your demographic online is gonna be different from your demographic in real life because everyone that has done business with you in real life, they might not follow you on social media. And that's the truth. So you might have a different audience. So that's why it's always important to be looking at your analytics. So if you have a phone, you can pull up Instagram insights. It looks exactly like this screen right here on the left hand side. And this would be a great way to start off with advertising because based off of Instagram, I can now look at my audience and say, okay, maybe I need to be advertising in New York, LA, San Francisco, Chicago, and Austin, because those are my biggest markets. Now, with that said, um, after putting in those cities, I want to be advertising to maybe the 25 to 44 um, age range because that is where majority of my audience is. I don't want to be spending money on 18 to 24 or 65 or older only because a big percentage of my audience is not that demographic. So why would I be spending money on something I already know doesn't necessarily show a lot of interest in what I have to offer. So keep in mind, this works for products and services. If you're in B2B, this absolutely works too. You can target bit other business owners. So keep that in mind. The next one is gonna be Facebook Audience Insight. I think, yeah, so this is the Facebook Audience Insight. To me, this is one of my favorite places to start besides looking at uh, Instagram analytics or insights. and this will allow you to, over here on the left-hand side, type in your city that you're thinking about advertising in. So even if you're just thinking about it, you can go ahead and type in that city right here. Now, the next part is going to be age range. Interest is going to be, hey, are people interested, if I'm a gym owner, are people interested in being fit? If I am a restaurant, are people interested in hot dogs, hamburgers, whatever I'm offering? Now, the other thing you can also type in under pages is individuals that already follow you. So this is huge because once you type in all of these and fill out this entire form right here on the left-hand side, what Facebook is going to do is they're going to populate your screen with everything on the right-hand side. And they're going to tell you, hey, based off of all of those different metrics and what you're kind of looking for, we can guess that your demographic is going to be right here in the 25 to 44 age range. We can also guess that those individuals like to work and play. We can also guess that a lot of those individuals are family, have a family of their own. And then we can go over to page likes. So page likes are going to let us know, hey, these are the other pages that individuals are following with, following. And we can also go with, hey, these are where they actually live. Activity, where are they? What type of device do they use? Household, income, they're gonna let us know the income and whether or not they purchase things online. So Facebook gives you the tools and resources to do well. Sarah put, this page is through Facebook business site. Very useful. Yeah, Sarah, this is through business.facebook.com and it's called uh, the Facebook Audience Insight. Oh, let me go back. There we go. Yeah, it's called Facebook Audience Insight. 
So yeah, Facebook gives you all of these tools and resources. Why? Because they want you to do well. When you do well uh, on advertising, when you do well on any social media platform, it's a benefit to them because if you do well when it comes to advertising, then hey, guess what? You want to grow your business, you're gonna spend more money. When you spend more money, they make more money. So it's a win-win for everyone. And Hannah asked, does Facebook charge for these audience tools? No, these are absolutely free. That's what I'm saying. Like Facebook, it's in their best interest to give you these tools and resources for you to go out there and do well. They want you to grow your business and they give you the tools and resources to grow your business. They are not going to hide your ad from individuals who won't convert. Why? Because they want you to do well, they want you to spend more money with them and they wanna make more money, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, the other one that's really great is your email list. Um, this is what we call, awesome Philip, perfect. Um, this is what we call, um, retargeting basically and there's a process called hashing so you basically upload your email list onto Facebook and Facebook will run its analytics and will uh, basically say okay based off this entire list that you uploaded for whatever reason everyone in this list wears a blue shirt and what Facebook will do is they will go through the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, all the other platforms you're advertising on, and they will find individuals that also wear a blue shirt. Why? Because based off of your email list, those individuals wear a blue shirt for whatever reason. So it only makes sense that if they wear a blue shirt, they fit the demographic, the age range, the location, there's a good chance that they will also like your content, that they will also like your product or your service. So that is extremely important because you can have your email list of 1,000 individuals and basically duplicate that to 2,000 individuals of people who are already wanting your product or service. Does that make sense? Does anyone have questions about that? Yeah, Leslie, so basically, just think about it this way. You have an email list. It's almost like reaching out to those individuals by calling them. Um, if you have an email list, you can upload that onto Facebook. And when you upload that, your ads will be shown to everyone on that email list. That's basically all it is. And I hope that clears it up a little bit more. Please let me know if it did or it didn't. Orlando, same thing. Hey, um, I hope that cleared it up. So yeah, this is the Facebook audience insight. Please use this tool. The great thing is you can actually save this audience. So once you create it um, and you start uh, pulling up all the information, you can actually save it to use it later on. And this is gonna save you a lot of time later on. Um, Robert asks, how does this affect customer privacy? Will they be spammed any more or less? Hey, you know what? Individuals are gonna be shown ads regardless. Um, this is just a, a code that goes onto your website. So you might have to upload, uh, update your privacy policy on your website. But besides that, every single big business does this tool. Everybody. Um, Facebook actually went to uh, court not too long ago, and I hope everyone remembers that. And because of that, um, I mean, it's a bad thing because Facebook basically has information on all of us. But as a business owner, you get to use that information to reach your targeted demographics. And Robert, yeah, so, oh, you're talking, okay, that makes sense. Okay, I get you now. So basically, your customers, uh, without their permission, you just want to make sure that that stays private. Yes, it does. The process is called hashing. So basically, Facebook doesn't really see who they are. You don't, they don't see the name. They don't see anything else. Once they capture your audience, they duplicate that and they get rid of it. So yeah, they don't store any of that information. And when you grow your audience, on the flip side, you or the advertiser do not get access to uh, who the ad has been shown to as well. So it kind of keeps everything uh, blindsided on both sides. Yeah, of course.
Great question. Okay, so let's move on to this next portion. This is really important because this is exactly what I was talking about. We want to advertise on Facebook, but also keep in mind that we have the option to advertise on specific platforms. Now, Instagram, again, is my favorite platform. And this is another reason why. Because when we advertise on Instagram, we're going to get, when we advertise video on Instagram, we're gonna get twice as much engagement. So keep that in mind, video is so important right now. We get twice as much engagement. That's huge. Um, and basically the internet, if you paid attention to, or if you've joined us uh, in any other training, um, we have talked about how video will account for close to 82% of all internet traffic in the future. And this is a study done by Cisco, which is an electronic company. Um, and this is on their internet forecast for the year. So keep that in mind, video is so important. And when we advertise with video, not only are we going to be getting more engagement and keep this in mind, more engagement leads to more exposure, more exposure leads to more traffic for our business, which leads to more conversions. So with more engagement, we are also going to be reducing the cost of our advertising. So when we run ads with video, it's just generally going to be a lot cheaper than running a static image um, as an ad. So these are gonna be the best practices when it comes to advertising. And I hope you guys take a screenshot of this, write it down, whatever you want. Um, the first one is use video where you can. So again, this is so important. You do not need a fancy videographer, the best video out there. If you have a relatively new iPhone, you are perfect because they record in 4K. So quality, which is the second portion of this, I mean, you don't have to worry about quality with this. Um, when it does come to video, keep this in mind. If you are going to be advertising on Instagram stories, advertise, advertise a video that's vertical. If you're going to be advertising on desktop, you might want to throw something horizontal. So always keep that in mind. Hey, where is my ad going to be shown? And based off of that, that is going to determine the orientation of my video. If everyone's going, if you were only advertising on mobile devices, hey, I would say vertical as much as possible. Uh, we have a question right here, Lisa. Um, going back for a minute, is that cheaper message based on increased engagement assumption? Um, yeah, Facebook just wants you to use more video. Um, that's really all it is. So when Facebook says, hey, use this feature, uh, create this type of content, you should listen to them again because they want you to do well. They want you to uh, perform well, grow your business. And when they give you recommendations, I would follow them because they're trying to help you out. Um, the next one is gonna be focus on quality. So again, if you're creating video, you don't need a big videographer if you just have one of these things. Um, unless it comes to editing, you want fancy edits on there. But one of my best performing ads was seriously just uh, a selfie like this and I talked to business owners in San Antonio and I got lots of leads off of that and I got some clients as well. Now, when it comes to quality for images, we need to make sure that, hey, if we have a product, if we are a restaurant, we have a specific dish, make sure that photo is really good. Make sure it's really good. You might have to edit the colors a little bit uh, to make it really pop, but if you are in the food and beverage industry, photos, I mean, they sell itself. If someone sees an amazing plate of tacos, I mean, people are gonna get hungry and they're gonna say, you know what, next time I'm really hungry, I'm gonna to go to this restaurant. Um, so uh, keep in mind, high resolution videos, photos always perform well. Um, yeah, so, 
Uh, Daphne, lo there's a lot of YouTubers out there that just use their iPhone. Um, K and J, which is geared towards the younger demographic. Um, I really like them. A lot of their videos are just a tripod and their phone. It's 4K, right? I mean, it's 4K. What more do you need? When it comes to editing, there are different softwares out there for videos. I personally edit on Premiere Pro, but that's on my desktop, on my laptop. Um, but you can also edit on iMovie. It comes on iPhones. Um, if you are not an Apple user, Windows Movie Maker, that works fine as well. There are plenty of resources out there, and I just want you to keep that in mind. Really, all I want you to do is just get started, right? Uh, we can worry about, hey, having the best ad later on. I just want everyone to really get started because if we just think, hey, when we get this piece of equipment, when we learn how to edit this well, when we can afford a videographer, um, that's when I'll be happy with advertising. No, because you can have the best video, you can have the best product, you can have the best service, but if your ads don't bring in your audience and don't bring in traffic, then, hey, then all that time you spent on that website, all that time you spent on that uh, photo, on that video are pretty much just wasted because you don't have an audience. So an audience is always more important. That's why I always say exposure is so important. Yeah. Um, the next one is going to be focus on your offer. Look, this is so important. I do not want you to just run an ad to run an ad. A big thing that I always say is to be intentional. If you want people to visit your website, let them know, visit my website, purchase my product, sign up for a free consultation. You need to make this extremely transparent and to the point. You can have all those benefits uh, for your product or your service in the copy, but when it comes to your offer, make sure that it is apparent. If you sell shoes and your ad has uh, a photo of a coffee mug and you barely see a shoes in a corner, you're not going to get someone's attention for more than like a second, two seconds, three seconds. So don't leave the viewer guessing what is this ad for? Make it extremely uh, apparent. Um, the next one is going to be testing. Testing is the secret sauce to, um, yeah, testing is a secret sauce to advertising. This is the secret sauce. There is no, hey, this is a secret formula for ads. This is how you convert three times as many customers on ads. There is no such thing. You need to test your ads. You need to see what works, what doesn't work. Because you can have a video or a photo that you absolutely love and you think it's the best photo or the best video. But if your audience doesn't think so, then hey, it's not the best photo, it's not the best video. So the market always determines what's right and what's working. So keep that in mind. Um, retargeting, that's something we're gonna be talking about here in just a bit. Yeah, and definitely some um, industries, Facebook will just kind of put restrictions. This is a weird time right now, so yeah, that might be a restriction. I haven't ran into that yet. Um, but yeah, it, that just happens. Any other questions before we get moving on? Awesome. So this to me is the most important thing, right? We have a great ad. We are driving traffic over. They go to our website and it's not mobile friendly. If they're on social media, chances are they're on their phone. So I always recommend creating your website mobile first because we want to make the purchasing process as simple as possible. We don't want to have any barriers. We want people to go from our fans, our customers, a stranger to our ad, to purchasing, to booking, to getting more information about our products or services. And it starts with having a mobile friendly website. That is so important. We don't want to be, be spending money on all of our advertising, we don't want to spend money on a photographer, a videographer, editing, all of that good stuff. 
only to have a bad website where people are having a tough time purchasing our products or services. Now, Rosie put, uh, what are ways to do testing? We're gonna be talking about that in the next slide. It's a great question. Um, but yeah, hey, everyone needs a mobile-friendly website. You don't need a full-blown website as long as it looks really clean. You can capture someone's information if you're selling a product online. Um, as long as you have the ability to do that, you're absolutely fine. Oh yeah, so I, I'm with you on that. Um, so if you don't have a mobile friendly website, please, please, please invest your time or money in getting one. That is so important. Um, and if you want some suggestions on some providers, let me know. That's something we could possibly answer at the very end. But there's tons of options out there, very affordable, um, that you can go out and do on your own. But you absolutely need a mobile friendly website, please. Oh, and, and to that, I was trying to get, um, and this is an example, and this is kind of what bugged me. Um, my girlfriend, she wanted nails done. She wanted to get a card for a nail salon. I, was, I went from Instagram to messaging them and I asked them, hey, can I get a gift card? And they said, oh yeah, you can go to our website. Their website wasn't working. Uh, I told them the website wasn't working. They told me that they cannot purchase gift cards on the website. That was frustrating to me. So because of that, I took my business somewhere else. And I mentioned that because that's exactly what happened to me like two days ago. And I didn't think about that until just now. Um, so this happens on the daily you don't want to be missing out on customers. So please have a mobile friendly website and have your products and services on there. So Sarah, to your point, this is how we test. So we need to be looking at analytics, but when we test, this is kind of the format I like to run. I might have photo A with photo, a uh, photo A, B, C. And on photo A, I have headline one and two. On photo B, I have headline one and two. Photo C, I have headline one and two. So basically, I'm creating a lot of headlines, a lot of captions, and testing out different images and create different variables and put them all together to create different variables, different types of ads. And what I do is I run all of them at one time. And once I run all of them at one time, I look at the analytics, see which one drove the most traffic, and start to narrow down um, my winner, as I like to say. Um, yeah, th these are supposed to be uh, blurred out because it's one of my clients. I'm sorry, but this is what I'm trying to get at. The girl crossing her arms, that's one photo. The girl and her, uh, the, the mom and the son, that's another photo. We're testing the same headline on those two images because we're trying to figure out, hey, which photo per performs better? Then we'll go down to, hey, what headline performs better? So that's really what we're doing. We're getting different types of options, putting them together, putting it out into the market and letting the market decide, hey, this is a great ad. So I'm starting really broad and I'm get, getting as narrow as possible in order to find my winning advertisement. Does that make sense for everyone? Perfect. So this is the retargeting. This is what a lot of the bigger, um, this is what, not bigger, I mean, we do this, do this on the local level. This is successful advertising. It's all in retargeting. Whether you're advertising on Google or social media, you need to have the Google Analytics and you also need to have a Facebook Pixel installed on your website. Again, if this sounds like kind of like, whoa, I need to learn how to code, no, you don't need to learn how to code. If you know how to copy and paste, you know how to install the Facebook pixel. So basically it's a code that goes onto the back inside of your website. And when it goes onto the back inside of your website, you can track individuals. So just like you go online, look for some clothes or look at a car, then go to another website and you see those clothes again, that car again, you go to Facebook, you see that those clothes again, that car again, Instagram, those clothes again, that car again, you can do the exact same thing with product or service. So someone looks at your post or maybe they went to your website and 
they left for whatever reason. So they go over to my website, they see uh, a camera that I'm selling. And for whatever reason, they say, hey, I don't want to buy this camera or hey, I got really busy, I'll finish the purchase later on. Um, they close that site down. Now, automatically, Facebook will create an audience of individuals that were looking at that one uh, camera. So it's exactly what we were talking about earlier, but this is how you do it. You need to have the Facebook pixel on there and Google Analytics. So yeah, absolutely, it's cookies. You follow them around all over the internet, and it basically automatically follows up with individuals. So this is going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of money because now you're going to be advertising to specific individuals. And on top of that, you are going to have a higher conversion rate because now you're not just showing your ad to people that might not know about you. You're now showing your ad to someone that showed some level of interest. They might've visited your website, liked one of your posts. Um, so yeah. So I hope this makes sense. This is gold right here. So um, really quick, I want to talk about like my like strategy when it comes to advertising. We start very general. Um, it's not uncommon to run maybe like a hundred different ads at one time. And then what we start to do is narrow that down. We look at um, analytics and once we have three or four, or even five ads that we noticed that are getting a lot of likes that are driving a lot of traffic that are not so expensive or a good price point because if they're expensive, but they're converting and we're being very profitable, that's fine. So a good price point is a better word for that. Then we'll test those out and we'll be a little bit more specific and we'll turn up the ad spend on that. So look, I know this was a lot of information. We have about 11 minutes left. Um, what I want to do first is thank everyone for joining the training. We're gonna have a message uh, from Juan here in a bit. Uh, after that message, I'm gonna be staying on for a little bit and I want to make sure that I answer any questions that you have about advertising. This was a lot of information. There's a lot more and we can go over um, that other piece in a free consultation. I'll be looking at your online um, presence. I'll be looking at your competitors. I'll show you what ads your competitors are running and we'll pretty much come up with a game plan. It's absolutely uh, no cost. But yeah, I'm gonna turn this over to Juan. After Juan is done, you can go ahead and start um, typing in some of the questions you have so that way I can answer them once we switch back over. You want, Juan, you wanna go ahead and uh, take it away? Rosie, thank you so much. Lindsay, thank you so much. Hey there, Mark. While we're waiting for Juan, I just wanted to, to thank everyone on behalf of the chamber for joining us. Uh, you know, if there's anything that we can do to help you with your membership or connect you to someone within the chamber that can help you with social media uh, or anything in regards to your business, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we're always happy to help. Um, but we've really appreciated uh, you, Mark, and, and having these, uh, these webinars and uh, this series for our members. It's been very helpful. Um, so uh, thank you all. And, and keep in mind, we are going to be sending out a recording to everyone who joined us today uh, and also to those who registered but maybe jumped on late or, or couldn't make it. Uh, we'll be sending uh, out the recording to everyone uh, and it will be posted on our YouTube page. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, I'll leave it open a few minutes for questions for you, Mark, and then Juan will be jumping on shortly. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, so let's go and hop into the Q&A. If you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the chat right here. I've also dropped in um, the link for the actual call as well. Orlando, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for spending some time over here. Vanessa, same, same to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, and this could be industry specific. If you have a specific product or service, uh, go ahead. This is your opportunity to 
ask me like, hey, what would you advertise? What would you do? Um, and I'll give you some insight into that. Or if you want to know about some of the softwares that I use, go ahead and ask about that as well. Also, everything online marketing. This is, um, this is my spe specialty. So uh, Michelle asked, can you share more about installing a Facebook Pixel? Yeah, so uh, um, the Facebook Pixel, it's just, you go over to business.facebook.com and there's a portion that says events manager. From there, it's going to give you the code. That's pretty much all it is. Copy and paste it over to your website. Um, it's not that complicated, I promise. It's that easy. Um, if you have questions, send me a DM on Instagram or um, you can reach out to me on the email. Uh, Daphne, what software would you recommend for a small chamber? It depends. What are you trying to accomplish with this um, software? And go, go ahead, uh, Juan, you can go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. I, uh, I have another phone call. I, as always, uh, uh, Mark, great job. Uh, you know, for an old guy like me, I really learn a lot from uh, listening to you all. And I think it's uh, for all of you in the uh, in the audience and all of the participants. Uh, thank you for for being on the line. But yeah, th these are really good. Uh, I look forward uh, to these uh, every time, just because I think they're very relevant and they're especially relevant in today's world and in today's uh, at, you know what, what's going on right now. Uh, I just came off another webinar where we were talking about this. So Mark, great job again for all the participants. Thank you. Uh, Let's make sure that we follow up Philip and let him know that uh, we'll be ready for the next one. So Mark, again, great, uh, great to have you on. And uh, Philip, great job, thank you. Thank you, Philip, thank you, Juan. Um, really appreciate that. And so let's go back up here, Lisa said. Um, yeah, absolutely, Lisa, you could uh, upload your Facebook Pixel and Google Analytics to Squarespace, it's under the Marketing tab. I know that for sure. And then uh, Leslie, I work in general contracting where do, where most people don't use. Yeah, you know what? I think it's going to be, hey, business owners or whoever you're trying to get a hold of. Um, keep in mind, pretty much everyone is on Facebook. Everyone is on Instagram. So you're not necessarily targeting the business. You're targeting the individuals inside the business. So I would change uh, the mindset in order to think about, hey, what... Um, how can I target the individuals inside the businesses I'm trying to work with? So that's how I would approach advertising for you, Leslie. Um, case management. Oh, um, Daphne, I'm not too sure what you mean by case management. Um, when it comes to like overall individual, like people management um, and like sales and just customer service and stuff like that. I use Salesforce. Um, that's my preferred software. I've used a lot of other providers, but Salesforce, I used on the corporate side and I also use it right now. Um, right now my company is using this time to rebrand. What would you say makes the best first impression for someone who visits the site for the first time? We are a PR company. Um, yeah, this is going to be really dependent on what your offer is. Uh, above the fold is going to be really important uh, when it comes to developing your website. So whatever action you want someone to take, make sure it's above the fold, that whole hero image, that's going to be extremely important because some people might go to your website for a couple of seconds and leave. So you want to make sure that if they leave, they at least know exactly what you offer and how you can help them out. Uh, Rosie, we are a solar company or solar LED light manufacturer on the way to advertising. Hey, you know what, Rosie, I, I hear you on that. Um, to me, a video, I mean, there's this LED light company that I actually follow because I like their product. Um, and it's, it, it's like, anyway, it, I don't want to get into the, their product, but they do a great job at advertising and they use a lot of video. So video ads would work for you, Rosie. Um, and also look at your competition. There's a way to spy on your competition and look at their ads. Um, I would first start off with that. Daphne, and if you need help with that, go ahead, sign up for the consultation. I'll, I'll basically do it for you. <laughs> um, 
I'll just make it super simple for you. I'll do it for you. Uh, and I'll show you how to do it. Um, Daphne, we are using uh, MailChimp, too many Excel spreadsheets. Yeah, I use uh, MailChimp for emails. I still use Salesforce for customer client management and also sales forecast and just uh, overall support. Uh, we need software. I'll give a quick analytics, auto emails, membership list, fundraisers. Uh, MailChimp is... I'm with you on MailChimp. I'm not the biggest fan. I still use it. I still think it's a lot better than other providers. Um, yeah, th that was a lot of questions. I think we got to them pretty fast. If you have any other questions, um, I think we still have about three minutes. If you don't, um, thank you again for sticking around, for taking time to learn uh, and better your business. Uh, also, please take advantage of this free consultation. I want to help you out even further, and I want to make everything very specific to your goals uh, and your products and services. So I just want to really help you guys out. Um, yeah, we don't have any other questions. I guess um, if you do have any other questions, you can contact me on Instagram. I'm going to put my uh, handle right here. Uh, you can go ahead and send me a direct message. Oh, uh, one, more uh, one more question. I guess, Philip, we can wrap it up after that. Is that okay? Perfect. So what do you recommend to have a client to click on Facebook page and fill out a form? Um, for booking specific date billing information. Um, I mean, you have that lead page. You can have that. When it comes to like booking, I use Calendly. So this is the link that you see right here for the consultation that is what i use for booking i use that for clients i use that for consultations i use that for general meetings because it automatically syncs up with my calendar and it won't overbook for me um uh oh yeah so just in general forms i like type forms it's a type forms um that's the one i use but um yeah there's so many providers out there, it's really going to be geared towards the look and feel that you like. Um, but for me, type forms is my go-to uh, uh, form generator. Cool. Thank you all so much for um, asking all those questions, being very engaged in this uh, training. I hope you learned a lot. And Philip, uh, Juan, thank you so much. And thank you to the organization itself. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Uh, and also just keep in mind, everyone, we will be sending out the link of the recording. Uh, if you have other questions, feel free to send them to me and I'll direct them to Mark uh, or I can send you his uh, information as well so you can email him directly. Uh, so thank you all again. Uh, we hope to see you uh, on our next webinar uh, and have a great day and a great rest of your week and stay safe out there. Thank you. Bye bye.